Now let's go over the steps on how to add an implant manufacturer. In your software in the upper right corner, if you look, there's an icon that looks like a down pointing arrow. If you put the cursor over that icon, it will tell you that this is the implant library management tool. By clicking on that tool, you will be given an option to add an implant manufacturer, remove an implant manufacturer, or import, import your own custom library. If you're looking to add an implant manufacturer, the option is selected as a default. All you would have to do is simply click Next. And then you are presenting, presented with all the different manufacturers. And as a default, the software selects all of them. The advice is to go ahead and select the option that says Select All to uncheck all and then simply look through the list. It is alphabetically aligned. Find the implant manufacturer that you are looking to install. And you certainly can select multiple, multiple brands. Select the implant manufacturer of your choice. Click Next. And then you will see there's a bar indicating updating uh, your library option. Um, so depending on the speed of your internet and how many implant manufacturers you've selected, the time will vary of, of how long it takes. In the meantime, you are welcome to click the Hide button and continue working on your software. If you are looking to remove an implant manufacturer from your list, go back to the same icon your implant library management tool, click on it, select the option to remove, select next, pick from your existing imported library, pick which one you would like to discard, select next, and you will no longer see that implant library in there. At the same time, if there's a, an implant library that uh, we do not have available, but you do have, a, uh, have it saved somewhere on your computer, you're able to import your own personal library. Again, go back to the same icon to manage your library. Select the option to import the custom library. Select Next browse to the location where you have your implant library saved, select that icon, select that folder, click Next, and your personal implant library will be uploaded as well. Now let's go over the steps on how we can find or best find our potential implant site. With the software open in a curved slicing tab, you will notice that the software automatically creates a panoramic view and it is labeled with a red color here. And at the same time, you have a cross-sectional view labeled with the blue color. So you're welcome to use what the software gave you. It is also advisable to create your own arch. So in the tool section, there's an option to activate dental arch creation mode. If you select that option, a message will appear that asks you that if you would like to delete an existing arch. You would go ahead and click Yes. And the reason you would want to do this, um, depending on the area where you're placing your implant, if you're working within the upper arch, you're presented with a slider bar here that on the bottom of this axial uh, presentation, that allows you to move, click and hold, and move into the upper arch. And this way, as you create your panoramic view, it will be more reflective of the upper arch. If, on the other hand, you're placing an implant in a lower arch, which we're going to do in this example, we're going to slide the slider bar to the lower arch, and then simply, being the option that is still, still selected to create an arch, we simply would start clicking between the buccal and lingual on either side. And as we do, 
we are creating, as you can see on the right hand side, automatically creating that panoramic view. And you will notice there's a cross-sectional view as well at the same time. I simply would then double click when I get to the end and I am presented with a panoramic view. Now, at the same time, you most likely would like to trace a mandibular nerve canal. So to display that mandibular nerve canal the best and make it easier for you to find it, it is advisable to go to your set integration and display the lowest number that you see on your software. At the same time here, if I'm looking to place a nerve on the patient's right-hand side or, or, or place an implant and trace the nerve, I'd want to go over to the axial view to the patient's right-hand side, move the dot, either lingual or buccal, until I see best representation of the nerve. So if I move it in one direction and it's not there, I'm welcome to click and hold and move in a different direction. I'm noticing now that the nerve is showing up. So then I would go to the next dot over, do the same thing, move in one direction or the other until I see the best rep representation. And I simply would want to do this. I would want to do this until the nerve is clearly displays, displayed. It is helpful at the same time to then trace that nerve. So select the activate nerve canal tool. Once it's blue, simply click right into the middle of the nerve and continue creating short clicks to follow the curvature of the nerve. So when you get to the very end, you can simply double click. You don't have to worry about accuracy here because if you're not, you can simply go in back to the, any of these dots, click and hold and readjust your tracing. Now we are interested in moving the cross-sectional view to where our potential implant site is. So we are going to go ahead and grab, I mentioned earlier, the cross-sectional view is labeled in blue. And you can see it represented here in the axial representation. So I'm interested now in moving it over to our potential implant site. So I would click and hold on the large dot that gives me a double-sided arrow, move to the implant site, and then there's a smaller dot that gives me a four-sided arrow. By clicking and holding on this dot and angling, I am able to then have a better representation to where the implant should be. Personally, I would also advise going to the mouse selection in the upper left corner in the adjustment window selecting the zoom option for the wheel of your mouse. And this will then allow you to use the wheel of your mouse and zoom into your potential implant site. You will see and notice that there is a an outline or cross section of the nerve that we had just traced in, in, in the panoramic view. With our panoramic view displayed, our nerve traced, and our potential implant site displayed, on the left-hand side, in the tool section, we're going to click an icon that looks like a, an implant to activate implant placement tool. As you click on that icon, you are given a set of instructions on how to place an implant. So. In step number one, number one, you simply click at the top of the bone. In step number two, you simply drag down and then angle left or right. And when you're satisfied, you click again. And then you are presented with all the implant manufacturers or all the sizes that will fit in there. Of course, then you are still able to adjust the implant after it's been placed. I'm given this option every time I click on the to place an implant. So the, the tutorial, if I don't want to see this tutorial again, I can select the option here to do not show it again, click OK, and it will not show up again. Now I'm simply going to follow the instructions that the tutorial gave me. So I'm going to click at the top of the bone, drag down, 
move left or right, find the best angle possible, and then click again. And now I'm presented with the implant sizes that will fit in there. Of course, if I'm not happy with what the software suggested, I could go lower. As far as the size, I can change and see what I like best as I go through this. If you're looking to maybe select another brand of implant, another manufacturer, on the right-hand side, you can go ahead and expand this field and then select another manufacturer. As you select another manufacturer, it will select all the subcategories. So if I click on the right-hand side with this tiny arrow, I will notice that all the subcategories have been selected. So to make your library look cleaner, I generally would advise that you select, deselect all the options, deselect all the options, look for the brand of implant that you'd like to use, go to the right hand side, expand, and then only select the particular categories or subcategories of any one of the implant manufacturer that you actually use in your office and then click OK. So now I have a an implant placed in the implant site. If I'm looking to adjust the implant, you will notice in the middle of the implant I have three dots. If I click and hold on the middle dot, this allows me to move the entire implant up or down, left or right so I'm still able to adjust the implant. The dot at the end of the implant, top or bottom, allows me to angle. So if I click and hold, I'm able to then angle the implant. Now, it's a good idea to look at the 3D display, adjust it, and then you will see how the implant is behaving. You're also welcome to go to the adjustment window, click on the 3D display, and reduce transparency so that you can see the relationship of the nerve and your implant. Once your implant is placed, if you then change your mind and would like to try a smaller implant as far as length is concerned, or maybe larger implant, if you look on the left-hand side, you do have an option for length, plus and minus. So if I click on the plus option, I'm given the next uh, option up as far as, as far as length is concerned. If I click the minus option and click it again, I can keep reducing the size up or down. I can also do the same thing with the apical diameter. I can keep reducing the diameter. If I'm looking to replace an implant altogether with a different brand, I have an option here to replace the implant. Simply by clicking on that option, I'm then able to select either a different size or a different brand implant, select OK, and that size or that brand would be displayed. Looking over at the implant, we, you, you'll notice that we have the name the, the size displayed next to the implant. Um, it, it, I would strongly advise to go ahead and click and hold on that name and you're then able to drag it to the side so it's not interfering with the rest of the anatomy. You can altogether, if you look on the left hand side here, you can go altogether hide the object properties, in the, meaning you are not displaying the size or the brand of the implant. So you will notice now that option is crossed off. Simply to bring that back in, check the same option again. If you have the name hidden and you still need to know what brand or size implant that is, you will notice there's an option that allows you to point and it tells you exactly what size and brand of implant that is. If you are looking to hide the implant altogether, 
so that you can see the anatomy below. On the left hand side, there's an eye looking icon that allows you to, by clicking on it, hide the implant altogether. And of course, you can go ahead and click on that icon again to display the implant. To the right hand side, there's an option that looks like a trash can. This will allow you to altogether completely remove the implant. So if you are not happy with it, if you'd like to try, try something else, you can delete this implant. If you happen to place an implant and then you move any one of the views, if you move the transaxial view to a different site, if you should adjust the panoramic view in any way, there is one quick way to get back to the center of the implant without having to manually adjust back. Look, if you look back on the left hand side, there's an option here to center on implant. So I simply have to click on that button and the views are adjusted back to the center of the implant itself. It is helpful to also go to your preferences in the upper right hand side, select your implant tool in the preferences. And this is where you are able to indicate what uh, portions of the implant you would like to display. So if you do not need to see the restorative space, if you do not see the, need to see the abutment, you can cer certainly check or uncheck those options. You will notice one option um, here it indicates security box that is checked and this is why you have noticed around my implant I have a red glow when you see that red glow that generally would indicate that the implant is either too close to the neighboring tooth or too close to the nerve or maybe potentially outside of the bone so that is your safety box it's an ex excellent excellent tool If you are looking to display an abutment, there's a tool in the bottom of the implant option labeled abutment. When you click on it, the default option is none. You can choose to have a straight or angled abutment. And as you choose either one of them, you are presented with options as far as what size at, from minimum to maximum you can place in there. put a number in, select OK, and you will notice that abutment appear at top of the, on top of the implant. As I mentioned, the yellow option is your restorative space. This is an option that can be toggled on and off if you want to see it or not. The color of the implant can be changed as well. There's a color pad here that you can click on and select another color so the implant can be labeled any color you choose. You should now be able to display the panoramic view, trace the mandibular nerve canal, adjust the view, and place an implant.